Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to see the AWS services which are important for uh, a data engineering perspective. Okay, so these are the services which you would commonly encounter if you are working on a data engineering project using AWS. So uh, if you are a data engineer or aspiring to become a data engineer and you work with AWS, so this video will be uh, extremely useful for you. Okay, so let's get started. So the first step in any uh, data engineering project is uh, the data ingestion or streaming. So let's see the services which are uh, used in AWS for this uh, purpose of ingestion or data streaming. Okay, the first service that is, uh, you know, very commonly used is Amazon Kin Kinesis data streams. So this service lets you uh, ingest real time data and process the data in real time using like, I mean, EMR or Lambda or any other thing. Okay, so if your application has a use case for real time streaming and processing of the data, then Amazon Kinesis data streams is very important service. Okay, so uh, the next service that I would like to talk as Amazon Kinesis Firehouse. So if you have a real time data which needs to be ingested and sent to a particular destination like uh, let's say S3 or any other database, then you can use Amazon Kinesis Firehouse. So the main difference uh, between the Kinesis data streams and Kinesis Firehose is that you use Kinesis data streams to uh, re uh, stream the data in real time and process the data in real time whereas Kinesis Firehose would be used to stream the real time uh, data into a particular destination. Okay, so uh, these are the next service uh, that is used for ingestion uh, data ingestion is Amazon uh, database migration service. So uh, if you want to uh, like if you are uh, migrating a database to a cloud and uh, if you want to capture the CDC, the change data capture uh, records, then DMS is a very useful service. So using DMS, you can uh, configure your uh, job so that all the change uh, changes that happen in your database are captured and sent to the AWS. Okay, so this is also one of the important services in data ingestion. The next one that I would like to talk is about uh, this MSK. So Kafka is very uh, commonly used tool across the industry to do a real time ingestion of data. And uh, so you can of course like set up your own Kafka in uh, EC2 or anywhere and use that. But uh, Amazon provides a managed service for Kafka which like lets you quickly set up Kafka and start using it. Okay, so this is all managed by uh, Amazon. So uh, MSK is also one of the important services for data ingestion and streaming. Okay, so now uh, this is uh, the data ingestion and streaming part. So once you have the data, uh, you know, ingested or streamed into the cloud, the next uh, part is basically the data processing or ETL, like uh, extract transform load of the data. So you would want to transform or process the data that you have ingested, right? So uh, let's see the services that uh, are used for this purpose. So the first service is AWS Glue. This is basically, uh, the ETL server is completely managed by uh, AWS. So it gives you a lot of functionalities like, you know, cataloging of the data and transform ETL uh, by using Spark or many other tools. So uh, it's basically, uh, I mean, AWS Glue is a very useful service. So I'm going to make a different uh, videos on AWS Glue uh, discussing this in depth. But yeah, like, like I said, AWS Glue is one of the most important ETL services in AWS. Okay, so the next uh, service is AWS Lambda. So this is also a managed service by uh, AWS and Lambda is used to uh, like, I mean, write your quick processing logic and you know, get your code running. So Lambda is completely serverless. So you don't need to set up any servers or anything to run your code. So you can use Lambda to uh, write your code in Python, Java or uh, many other languages that are supported by AWS uh, Lambda and then uh, get your workloads running. Okay. So this is also one of the most commonly used uh, processing or ETL tools. So uh, another tool that is uh, used for data processing, this is especially for big data processing uh, is AWS EMR, Elastic Map Reduce. So EMR lets you run, uh, like process huge data workloads uh, using Spark. Spark is basically uh, uh, like, I mean, open source data processing tool, which is very famous. Uh, uh, with the data engineers and also the data scientists and ML engineers. So Amazon EMR uh, basically lets you set up the Spark cluster quickly and run your uh, workloads and process huge uh, amounts of data in a you know efficient manner. Okay, so uh, the next service is AWS Batch. So this also lets you like, I mean, uh, monitor and uh, run your uh, schedule and orchestrate your workflows in AWS. Uh, using like many services like EKS, uh, Kubernetes service or container, any other container services. Okay, 
so uh, this is about the batch processing the next one uh, processing the next uh, step is basically the data storage and the databases so uh, when it comes to storage the first service service that we always talk about is s3 s3 is a very robust and uh, very efficient storage service by aws you can put uh, store any amounts of huge amounts of data in s3 as a files S3 uh, can be uh, can act as your data lake to store huge uh, petabytes of uh, data, and uh, you can S3 also gives a lot of functionalities like uh, Glacier. You can archive your data if you're not using it very frequently, and they charge less for that. So S3 is very cost efficient and a very avail highly available and efficient uh, storage service by AWS. Okay, so uh, the next uh, service that I want to talk about is this Amazon RDS. This is a database service completely uh, managed by amazon again so you can spin up any like create any database of your choice like mysql or oracle uh, or any other postgres using this amazon, uh, amazon rds and uh, you can get your database up and running okay so this is a very important database service the next service is amazon dynamodb this is a no sql database uh, by amazon which is very it's very fast and uh, like i mean used to store your uh, no sql data okay and the next service that i want to talk about is amazon aurora db this is also a relational database but uh, with enhanced query performance by some uh, proprietary amazon technologies and uh, amazon says that you know amazon aurora gives you a very uh, fast performance as compared to any other databases so aurora db is also one of the database services that you can use explore uh, for database Okay, so that is about the database and storage services. The next thing is uh, data warehouse or analytics. Okay, so the most important AWS service for data warehousing is Amazon Redshift. This is a very widely used uh, warehouse service and it provides like a very uh, fast and uh, efficient way to analyze and query your uh, huge amounts of data. Okay, so Redshift is a very important service when it comes to warehousing and uh, for analytics, uh, you can use Athena. So Athena can be used in uh, conjunction with AWS Glue to query the data which is sitting in your S3 without actually like moving the data into any database. So uh, Athena is very efficient to run in queries on your uh, data which is sitting in S3. So uh, that is also one of the important service in analytics. And there is Amazon Redshift uh, Spectrum which basically gives the uh, gives you the advantage of amazon redshift query engine but without actually moving the data into a uh, redshift database data warehouse okay your data can actually be sitting in s3 and you can still run uh, queries from redshift using amazon redshift spectrum okay so these are the services which are uh, important for data warehousing and analytics and the next thing that i want to talk about is orchestration and workflow so your data like uh, workloads needs to be uh, scheduled and orchestrated and monitored okay the workflows needs to be uh, defined properly right so let's see the services which are required like i mean which are used for this purpose so the first uh, one is aws step functions this is a aws managed service which you can use to uh, like define your workflows and monitor them uh, in aws okay so the next service is basically amazon manage workflow for apache airflow airflow is a very uh, industry standard uh, tool which is used for orchestrating and monitoring uh, uh, data workflows so uh, you can ins install uh, airflow in your own server and then you know manage it and configure it uh, but uh, amazon has come up with this manage service wherein you just have to create an environment and you can start running your uh, airflow workloads within minutes so this is also very uh, important and commonly used service for uh, orchestration and workflows okay so uh, another one is uh, aws data pipeline which is a very important uh, service to which is can which can be used to uh, create your data workloads and uh, monitor them okay so these are the services which are used for orchestration and workflow and the last one is uh, version control and ci cd so this is not specific to data engineering but to build any application uh, of like you would need a version control uh, code management system right so let's see the services uh, and also the ci cd so to have your continuous integration and deployment of your applications to you know test and uh, production environments you would have to have an automatic pipeline setup so uh, let's see the services which are uh, used for this one 
So the first service is basically the code commit, uh, which is uh, an alternative to GitHub. I mean, I prefer, personally prefer to use GitHub, but code commit is an AWS managed service, which, which gives you uh, similar functionalities to GitHub, uh, which can be used. Okay. So uh, then for CICD purposes, you can use code pipeline, uh, which is again, AWS managed services to define your uh, CICD pipelines. Okay. So these are the services which you can use for version control and CICD. Okay, so uh, yeah, I, I hope I was able to give you a fair picture of what are the services uh, that you need to learn and where each service fits into the uh, scheme of things in a, from a data engineering project perspective. Okay, uh, of course, this list is not exhaustive. There are a lot of other services which can be used depending on your uh, use case and uh, depending on your budget and your requirement and many other factors. But uh, uh, I have, in this video, I have made an attempt to discuss the commonly used AWS services. Okay, do let me know uh, in the comments if I missed any service or if you would like to me cover, uh, if you'd like to me to cover any uh, AWS service in depth so that I'll be making uh, more videos on that service. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video.